This is London. More specifically, it's the airspace above London, which happens to be one of the busiest and most congested airspaces in the world. Each day, over 3,500 flights either land or take off from one of the busy airports in this famous metropolis. Now I know what you're thinking. You think we've provided you with some dodgy link to the wrong video, and this is not actually the Ken Hub video tutorial to learn about the thalamic nuclei. Well, believe it or not, you are in the right place, and this is the correct tutorial. Then why are we looking at planes? I hear you ask. Think about it this way. The 3,500 flights passing through London each day are monitored, controlled, and directed by the good people known as air traffic controllers. Yes, those unsung heroes of the sky who hide away in their lofty control towers. These are the girls and guys who tell each pilot where to go, how to get there, when to land, when to take off, and even make sure they don't land on the wrong runway. So interestingly enough, your thalamus also acts like a kind of traffic controller in your brain. It tells your nervous impulses coming from all over your body, including other parts of your brain, where they need to go, when they are allowed to go, and where they can't go. Sometimes it tells them to wait, or blocks them all together, in efforts to prevent the target destination becoming overloaded. Just like any major control tower, there are several air traffic controllers doing this job. And guess what? Your thalamus is no different. But instead of air traffic controllers, it has individual groups of nerve cell bodies, which are known as nuclei, each with a dedicated role for specific pathways within the brain. Without air traffic controllers, we would live in a world of continual travel mayhem. And similarly, without our thalamus, our brain would be a similar mess, with signals going to the wrong places, overloading our neural pathways and causing complete overload of our mental capacity to do basically anything. Are you intrigued to find out more? I hope so. Why not stay with me now as we explore the ins and outs of the thalamic nuclei? So today we're going to be talking about what the thalamus is and where about it's located, the thalamic nuclei, and the basic functions of the thalamus. We'll then look in more detail at the parts of the thalamus. And we'll finish by mentioning a clinical scenario where the thalamus is relevant. So let's start from the top and introduce the image we'll be discussing today. So in this image, we're looking from the left side at the brain and the brainstem cut in the mid-sagittal plane with the thalamus highlighted in green here. This over here is the thalamus removed from the brain with the anterior here, the posterior here, the lateral sides here, and the midline here. And we've sliced coronally through this left side of the thalamus and displaced the posterior part backwards so we can see what the thalamus looks like in cross-section. Each side of the thalamus is vaguely egg-shaped and is made of grey matter. And the two sides are connected by the interthalamic adhesion or connection. The thalamus is part of the diencephalon. And this includes four parts, the thalamus along with the subthalamus, the epithalamus and the hypothalamus. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at KenHub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.